Hi folks, Jen or Mer Griffin here today to talk to you about the uh, UFS, the Uninterrupted Feed System from Imeo in Greece that fits only on the GGTS that we looked at last week. This is my everyday device. Um, I don't leave home without it, I don't walk around the house without it. The uh, little bottom feeders like the Rio and the Ali E, they got me off analogs. Um, this is what keeps me off. So we're going to go ahead and take a detailed look at all the pieces that make up the GGTS UFS and how to make it work. Um, taking a real detailed look at some of the insides actually helps you understand when it's all together and you're using it, how the interplay of the juice controlling and the airflow actually works, um, which helps you operate a little bit, really helped with my learning curve. Now again, I do not recommend this for a new vapor. There is a huge learning curve. Um, every time you put a different juice in here, it has a different consistency, it has a different viscosity. Every time you use a different kind of atomizer, a low resistance atomizer will burn juice faster. It needs more fed into it before you get the dry addy taste. A standard resistance atomizer doesn't need as much. Um, PG is going to flow through faster than VG and then it's going to depend on the ratio of your juice. So pretty much every time you either fill it, close it off, or um, change the juice or atomizer, it probably needs different settings and it does take a little bit to get used to those. Um, let's take a look. So the UFS has nine parts. And we're going to take a look at them one at a time and closely look at how they work when it's all together so that you have a better understanding of how to work the controls. The first piece is the bottom section, which is also the atomizer connector. Um, the post that goes to the battery has a little O-ring to uh, keep it from uh, going too hard and you can see the post floats up into there where the atomizer goes. Um, it is very carefully sloped on the bottom so that inside the collector tank if it does get any juice the juice flows to the edge where those little air holes are on the ring and then you suck it back up through that post into the atomizer itself. So any juice that happens to leak out of the atomizer you can reclaim and suck back up into the end. The collector tank itself is much like the one we saw on the GGTS. Um, it's going to mate with that O-ring on the bottom. It has the air holes for when we put the control ring on. It, and it's usually pretty important to make sure that those are unobstructed when you clean it. Um, it just makes things work better. It also has O-rings towards the top so that the juice again is stuck in there and the only way to get it back up into the atomizer is to you know, suck it off that, that plane on the bottom into those holes and then it goes up the stem. Now you'll notice the uh, crenellations on the top there. They are specifically there and it's important when you screw an atomizer in to make sure that the air holes on the threads of the atomizer, as we're looking here, that little air hole there, ends up in one of the, one of the, the openings on the crenellations. Um, this is really important because this is how the flow works. This is how the juice gets into your atomizer is through those holes. So if they are blocked off, your flow is not going to be as good. Now the actual next piece we're going to put on is the uh, air control ring. And that goes has a one O-ring in it. And that O-ring goes towards the bottom. So it is that O-ring that goes over the air holes right there. And we're going to close those off for filling closed position is all the way down with the air holes obstruction. Next piece that goes on is the bottom of the tank itself which also acts as the juice control ring that has an o-ring to keep uh, juice getting out. You pop it in until it snaps and then you screw it to the right. And then you'll notice that the crenellations from the top of the post below come up into the bottom of the tank. That is the juice flow control. It basically, now we're going to look at it with an atomizer in there so you can see more clearly. Right now you can see the crenellations, you can see the holes, and there would be flow from juice sitting in the bottom of that tank through those crenellations into the air holes on the atomizer and then it would flow up into the atomizer. The control ring, when an atomizer is in it, can turn only so far. In other words, the atomizer blocks it from being unscrewed all the way. But when you screw it as far as it will go, you will see that you can no longer see those crenellations. You cannot see the air holes in the bottom of the atomizer. At this point, the juice flow ring is closed 
and there is no juice going from in the tank can get into the atomizer. So those two controls, now you can open it a little bit and you can see there's a lot of adjustment in how much flow you can allow of the juice from the tank into the atomizer. And now we are at open. And then you can see where juice can get from the bottom of that tank into the atomizer itself. Now the two controls work in concert because if the airflow is closed, there's no suction going on to pull the juice from the tank into the atomizer itself. For actual filling of the tank, we're going to close both the air and make sure that the juice flow control is also closed. The next piece that goes on is the acrylic tank window. Um, it also has O-rings to keep uh, everything clear. There's a, a wider bit and that one I usually take towards the bottom. Now you have to be very careful not to cross screw the threads in the acrylic window. That's really the only touchy part of this is to make sure that those don't get cross threaded. You can however get a replacement window um, and again you screw that all the way down so you can't see the o-rings so they make a seal. And you take the top cap which uh, you'll notice is very nice small threads and again you have to be sure when putting this on the uh, top itself that you're careful not to cross thread and, and kind of mangle the threads on the on the plastic window but again you screw that on tight so that the o-ring goes away and you're left with basically just that acrylic window now there are a ton of threads on the top here that our top cap goes on to um, and that's also another method and it's very important to keep that little o-ring in the top there because that makes a seal between the atomizer and the juice that's inside Next piece is the atomizer extender. The 510 atomizer isn't quite high enough to, to make that seal inside the cap. And an exciting grift tip is to get this out of the atomizer. It's kind of hard sometimes, so I use a, a chip puller from a computer repair set to grab. I mean, Nimeo did put these little, little indentation on the top here to get your fingernails in, but you know, I, I don't have fingernails, so that snaps into the atomizer, and then I use that little. Uh, chip puller to pull it back out again when I need to clean it. And now it is ready except for the top cap for us to go ahead and put some juice in. Um, I fill it just up to the threads on the inside. You can see there, not over the top of the atomizer, just to the threads on that uh, top of the tank there. And then you screw on the top cap. Now there are a lot of threads here which is important also for juicing the atomizer sometimes. And you just screw it all the way on and then you pick a uh, mouthpiece comes with the black Delrin which I fumble um, you can also order from Bruce a stainless steel one we'll just use the original Delrin at this point at first when you put this on you want to screw it down tight so it pushes that o-ring on the top to make a seal around the top of the atomizer extender and then I usually take it off and then put it back on just enough to catch so that it doesn't pull out and then you are ready to go. You can go ahead and attach it to the GGTS itself. Apparently I'm not good at attaching things today. Now the first thing you're going to do is slightly open the uh, airflow control so that you can get air in there otherwise it's not going to work at all. Um, at this point you could take a few drags to uh, make sure that you didn't get any actual stuff in the atomizer as you were filling the tank. Um, but usually you're going to open the juice ring a little bit so that when you pull air through it forces juice down and then up into the atomizer. Um, you can also, if you're having, you know, getting dratty, you can hold the tank with your thumb and then unscrew that top part a little bit. Not all the way. Remember, there are a ton of threads there. So just the act of unscrewing it a little bit will release a little air in and you'll see air bubbles come up through the tank that indicate juice has gone down into the atomizer itself. So I hope that was helpful to those of you that are interested in maybe trying to pick up a UFS. Just some easy tips for how I have learned to use the UFS better you might be thinking to yourself that you want that juice control ring all the way open so there's a big flow 
and you I usually like an airy vape so you know my big mistake was keeping the air ring all the way open you actually get less vapor see that wasn't a whole lot of vapor if I now actually stop that ring down there's something about the effort of pulling the air through that actually makes the juice flow better um, and you can actually back it off a little bit and you get more vapor when the air ring is closed off a little bit over those four holes. Got the same vape, a lot more vapor. Now I don't usually like a tight draw and it's not, it's not that the draw is becoming tighter, it's just that when you're pulling a little harder I think the very act of pulling air out of the atomizer through there forces juice then into those little holes in the crenellations and I almost never have the juice ring all the way open. I always have it backed off, backed off a little less if I have a VG juice in there, backed off a lot more if I have a PG juice in there. And I always start with that, that air control ring almost completely closed, just enough to allow air through and for the device to work. And then I kind of adjust from there till I have my juice. And I'm usually pretty good at spinning it right up these days to where I need it to be. Again, you got to learn for yourself, your juice, and your atomizer what the best way to have those is. Now, I made the mistake at the beginning, and this is pretty much the only time you will get a leak, is if you leave that juice ring and, and the air control ring all the way open, um, juice will sometimes get down into that container tank. And the only time you'll get leakage is if that container tank gets so full inside that juice then comes up and out the air holes. Um, that hasn't happened to me since like the first week I had it when I had that mindset of I have to have it completely open. Um, when I go to bed, I sit down and I close off the air holes and I close off the juice ring so I unscrew it until it hits the bottom of the atomizer and can't go anymore. And then I uh, close the switch lock. And that's pretty much how it goes in my pocket when I'm out and about. I can put it in my briefcase that way. I can leave it on the nightstand next to my bed and nothing is coming out of here. When I'm ready to use it again, I just open the air ring a little bit. I will open the juice all the way and then back it off about halfway just so that it's kind of in the middle. And then I will go ahead and put the switch lock back on. You know, uh, there's really thick juice in there and you're having a problem and you have the juice all the way open and you have the air stop down so that you're, you're forcefully pulling juice down and into the atomizer. Another trick you can do is, and you can always tell it's working because you'll see bubbles come up through here. Basically, if you're, but again, if you're having a problem getting a little dry out of you, you can just um, unscrew that a little bit and it'll let some air in and then juice down into the atomizer and it works really well. Um, this is my baby. Um, I don't go anywhere without it. It is attached to my hip. You will have to pry it out of my cold, dead hands. It's expensive. It's, you know, $200 for the DGTS, and it's about $130, $140 for the UFS itself. Um, hope you liked our look at the UFS. Mm -hmm.